The Dodgers will face Slime Diego in the National League Divisional Series. Bring it! Derwin James doesn't plan on changing his hitting style, just hitting people lower. Wear a cup. And we're a week away from NHL season, and you may as well flip a coin over the Kings' chances. Good morning. I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is Faithful Angelino's Morning Report. It is October 3rd, 2024, back in Northern California for work. As if being away from friends and family isn't bad enough, I'm floating amongst the flotsam and jetsam of humanity in the Bay Area. But on the plus side, I am going to wear my Dodgers cap to give them a reminder, we're better than everybody else in California. And that is a big theme we're going to get to. If you like being in the know of LA Sports, click and clack the like button. Click and clack the subscribe button. There's a notification bell. Hit that. It'll let you know when we drop new content. Sharing is caring. Let people know we exist. And by all means, comment. Now, before we go through the news and notes, a look at the scoreboard. Galaxy 3, Colorado 1. Ricky Poo scores a brace in the second half. The Galaxy won a match between the top two teams in the Western Conference. As a result, the Galaxy are within four points of clinching that top seed in the West. And the Rockies free for all from second to sixth. This, by the way, from a Galaxy team or a Galaxy franchise that missed MLS playoffs last year. LAFC edge St. Louis 1-0. Dennis Mwanga scored the only goal of the match. And that was pretty much it. Because in four matches with St. Louis, St. Louis not only hasn't beaten LAFC, they haven't even scored against LAFC. The black and gold boost themselves into second place in the Western Conference. Six points behind the Galaxy with three games left in the schedule. Look, to catch their rivals, LAFC's best bet is to win out and hope that either Austin and or Houston beat the Galaxy. Meanwhile, today, nada, 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 not a damn thing. And I really got to get this out of my system. We now know who the Dodgers will face in the National League Divisional Series. Slime Diego eliminated a pretty much wounded Atlanta team on Wednesday. Okay. Because to win the title, the Dodgers were probably going to have to face one of them sometime. And I'm not much make, for making predictions. But if you're feeling like a little tense about the weekend, recall that the Dodgers were one fluke triple play away from sweeping the alleged hottest team in baseball last week. Now, I don't know about you. I don't know about you. But I want to hear silence from those fair weather frauds in the stands next week down in Slime Diego. Because let's not get it twisted. Those front running fakes never support their teams in anything unless it's against Los Angeles. Ever. Slime Diego never wins titles. I have more ex-wives running around with more rings than the Padres have ever earned, which is zero. Not only do they not win titles down in Slime Diego, we rescue their team from absolute obscurity. We've rescued two of them so far. We didn't even ask. They begged. They needed Los Angeles to actually get a fan base, to actually try to stay profitable. And yet those mouth breathers down south right now have this ridiculous false sense of security that they have the title in the bag, just like last year when they face planted and missed the playoffs entirely. Slime Diego is the poop talkingest, have nothing as sports town in human history. LA, on the other hand, is the greatest sports city in the world, whether it's in college athletics with USC or UCLA's more than 100 national titles, baseball, football, hockey, Kings still have two Stanley Cups, soccer, welcome to MLS, Slime Diego. You still have a long way to go to catch up with either LAFC or the Galaxy. And I don't even think I remember mentioning 17 NBA titles. The list goes on and on. More titles compared to an absolute goose egg down to, oh, let's stay classy. Stop it.
Stop it. I want to hear silence down south. Now, as for the series itself, uh, we know that the top of the rotation is going to be Jack Flaherty in Game 1 in L.A. on Saturday, Yoshinobu Yamamoto on Sunday. Speaking of having an edge, a reason to excel, Flaherty will be a free agent at the end of the season. I think he knows that the playoffs mean a potentially bigger bag. Meanwhile, the Puds have a problem of their own now. Starting pitcher Joe Musgrove has an elbow problem. And according to Dave Roberts, the mood in the clubhouse is borderline seething. Quote, our guys are tired of it. I see more hunger. I see some more edge. I like that. Not to say that guys weren't prepared or anything or cared, but there's a different level of intensity. Unquote. Good. Roberts also believes Freddie Freeman will be in the starting lineup but his tweaked right ankle will limit him defensively. Glad to know Freddie Freeman doesn't play shortstop, right? Freeman is taking swings in batting practice. Uh, moreover, I'm actually starting to think that the Dodgers are jerking the scribes around a little bit in advance of the playoffs, claiming that they, quote, don't anticipate, unquote, Shohei Otani pitching in the playoffs. This is according to general manager Brandon Gomes. Misinformation. It isn't just for QAnon anymore. So yeah, starting Saturday, PUDs, Dodgers, middle-aged white guys who think they can rap. Bring it on. Bring it on. We'll put that stupid goose on the fire to celebrate with <laughs> we'll celebrate with the victory meal. Speaking of teams that left San Diego because they knew they weren't liked down there, the Chargers' Derwin James is back at practice after a one-game suspension for what the NFL called repeated unnecessary roughness violations. Asked if he was going to change his playing style, James replied, quote, no, it ain't going to change excrement. It's definitely not going to change nothing. Like I said, I'm just going to go lower. I'm not going to change. I'm going to play my style, but like I said, I'll just go lower, unquote. <clears throat> if you're wondering what it means to go lower, uh, it means to hit the ball carrier below where the ball is. Because, quote, I'm not going to keep paying 700, 800,000, unquote. Can't say I blame him. I just bought a car and I'm still coughing up blood over the down payment. Also, with the Bolt receiver, DJ Chark is eligible to return from injured reserve. Did not practice with the team Wednesday. Instead, he was seen off to the side working out. Now, at this point, it sounds prudent. There's no rush. Uh, the Bolts are in a bye week. They've got time to figure things out. Everybody loves to forecast who will win what. AI gambling addicts, those sports uh, magazines that are still available at Walgreens behind the row of lubricants. So take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt, but The Athletic is forecasting the Kings will almost get to 93 points this season, which would in turn give them a 55% chance of qualifying for the playoffs and a 1% chance of winning the Stanley Cup. They did take Drew Doughty and his broken ankle into account in the sense that before that injury happened, the Kings had a 62% chance of reaching the playoffs. Which doesn't sound like much. But one of the things that they take into account on the plus side is the Kings play in a relatively weak Pacific division. You are mixing in a lot of games with San Jose and Anaheim. And while it is absolutely fair game to lay a grotesque lack of progress with the Kings at Rob Blake's feet, they do credit him for how they've set up Quinton Byfield to succeed. Here's the thought process. Centering the first and third lines are Andre Kopitar and Philip Deneau. Two guys who are defensive minded, two guys who wear down opponents, they play the tough minutes, then, theoretically, sandwiched in between the two, there's going to be Byfield feasting on the worn-down opponent with Kevin Fiala along for the ride. In other words, for offensive performance, 
There's a chance, they think, that the Kings could become Byfield's team as early as this year. Now, now that I've said all that, have you overdosed on the hopium? Well, if you did, don't go to the light just yet, okay? The reality is uh, Dowdy is arguably their best player. Losing him long-term makes the Kings roster loaded with decent players, but not excellent ones. They could miss the playoffs with more ease than advancing in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Put it to you that way, that's actually a compelling storyline, and I, hey, I might wind up buying the throwback jersey just because. UCLA has not announced a starting quarterback for Saturday's game at Penn State yet. Deshaun Foster said as recently as two days ago that Ethan Garbers is certain that he will be okay to play after getting hurt against Oregon. But the reality is Garbers hasn't practiced for the last three days. So could be a plot twist of Bruin. Pun most definitely unintentional. We've been discussing who would get snaps along the defensive line now that Bear Alexander has fled uh, USC. Last week, week, only four linemen took snaps in the win against Wisconsin. But apparently a fifth could nudge his way into the rotation. Defensive coordinator Danton Lin is high on freshman Jide Abasiri, who admittedly has only played in one game for the 11th ranked Trojans, but is practicing so hard as to try to crack into the rotation. Lin told a USC blog, quote, each game is going to be a little different, but he's a guy that we want to get playing time because I think his development in games is going to be huge. He's been doing a great job in practice, unquote. You might recall the plan for the Lakers last season. Do you remember that far? LeBron James was going to have a minute of about 32, 30 minutes a game. That plan lasted for the season opener and was quickly thrown out the window just like a non-biodegradable styrofoam container. And then the inmates in the jumpsuits would pick it up on the weekend. Look, J.J. Redick told ESPN that there is a plan for James this season to avoid injury. Quote, we'll share that plan when it's appropriate, unquote. Meanwhile, Terrence Mann hasn't been named a starter for the Clippers. He gets paid like a starter. Ty Lu simply hasn't affirmed it. Thing is, Mann is acting as if he already is a starter when he's talking to the scribes. He is mentioning how excited he is to share the backcourt with James Harden. Quote, it's pretty cool to be able to learn from him. He's a genius, unquote. Okay. Could we hear that from Ty Lu first? <laughs> no offense. But you let me know what you think in the comments thread. Tell me what you think the Dodgers' chances are against Slime Diego. For that matter, do you think it's just simply a matter of, I don't know, aiming for the upper inner thigh instead of the head for Derwin James? And if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to subscribe to Faith Philangelinos. We're talking LA sports every single day here. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow. Faith Philangelinos is a Kim Corta El Queso production. Take care.